Hello, and welcome to this presentation by the Foundation for the Education and Research in Neurological Emergencies. This educational lecture is titled Managing Emergency Department Headache Patients, Life-Threatening Headaches, and COVID-19 Implications. My name is Edward Sloan. I'm currently Medical Director of the Physician Assistant Studies Program at Dominican University, and I have been an attending physician in emergency medicine at Carl Foundation Hospital. I am Professor Emeritus in the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of Illinois at Chicago. The content for this lecture comes in large part from the monograph titled Evaluation and Management of Life-Threatening Headaches in the Emergency Department by Dr. Zoda et al. It was published in Emergency Medicine Practice by EB Medicine, February 2019. Please refer to the complete video and audio content for this educational lecture, as well as other individual parts of this lecture via links found at fern.org. You may also refer to the initial podcast and the CME option on the EB Medicine website at ebmedicine.net and specifically at the link listed below. Please note the disclaimer listed below. In general, this information is intended to augment and not replace the clinical judgment that guides the management of any individual patient. Another important secondary headache cause is carotid or vertebral artery dissection or cervical artery dissection. In carotid artery dissection, there might be neck pain related to some flexion or extension injury. And this injury could be remote and it could be mild. A patient states that they were cleaning out their closet and a box fell and hit them on the head. And then several days they have symptoms. It can cause anterior stroke syndrome or symptoms due to the carotid artery problem. It can cause hemiplegia, slurred speech, or Horner syndrome symptoms. In this picture, we have a demonstration graphically and on imaging of an internal carotid dissection defect seen in a drawing and on MR angiography. Now, what about this issue of Horner syndrome? A 59-year-old female presents with headache and neck pain for one day after cleaning her closets the day before. Her neck is diffusely tender, and she has a left eye ptosis and meiosis seen here. Again, this can be related to the carotid artery dissection. And you need to know that when a patient has a third nerve palsy, they can have ptosis and meiosis as a result of third nerve dysfunction. What about vertebral artery dissection? Again, a patient may present with neck pain due to some mild or remote flexion extension injury. It doesn't have to be severe, but it can be. And in this case, there could be posterior circulation stroke symptoms. These would include dim vision, dizziness, diplopia, dysarthria, discoordination, or hemisensory complaints, more often pain and, se- uh, pain and temperature, noting that we most often just check sensory light touch. What is the treatment for cervical artery dissection? The treatment includes medical treatment to prevent stroke, regardless if it's spontaneous or traumatic in etiology. Antiplatelet therapy has been shown to be as effective as antithrombotic therapy from the CADISP, C-A-D-I-S-P trial. If there's an extracranial outside the cranium dissection, IV heparin, then oral anticoagulant is advised. If it is an intracranial dissection, it is advised that the patient be started on aspirin or clopidogrel. And if the patient can't be anticoagulated, use the aspirin or clopidogrel approach. And remember that it is most often not useful to have both aspirin and clopidogrel to be used for neurological diseases or problems that the aspirin and clopidogrel approach or aspirin plavix is most often useful in cardiac disease states such that there won't be a complicating hemorrhage or bleed as a result. When considering the diagnosis and treatment of emergency department headache patients, especially in the setting of this current COVID-19 pandemic, the following can be concluded. Emergency department headache patients 
who present with potential life threats can be identified. In order to do so, a systematic evaluation is critical and the electronic medical record can help with this process. Most importantly, subarachnoid hemorrhage can be excluded in patients who present with sudden severe headache given our current diagnostic capabilities. Also to be noted, head and neck infection, CNS infection, and CNS thrombosis must be considered if subarachnoid hemorrhage is excluded as the likely etiology for patients with potentially life-threatening headaches in the emergency department. During the time of this current COVID-19 pandemic, it is possible that common primary etiologies of headache, such as muscle tension headache, migraine, or even headache related to dehydration can commonly be seen in emergency department patients. However, when considering patients with potentially life-threatening headache in the emergency department, at this time, it is worthwhile to always consider COVID-19 as a potential etiology of these life-threatening headaches. During the time of this COVID-19 pandemic, Besides specifically testing for the COVID-19 virus, there's no need to specifically alter our approach to diagnosing and treating patients in the emergency department with life-threatening headaches. If you have any specific questions related to this educational content, please send an email to fern.org at gmail.com. We encourage you also to go to the fern.org website for more content related to this educational program as well as other content related to the care of patients who present to the emergency department with life-threatening illness and injury related to neurological emergencies. Thank you.